early bird catches the worm as I eagerly grabbed my camera equipment for the day. We started the morning with a good night's rest in Oxford, Mississippi, as we embarked on our mini rail journey through the Magnolia State. Our drive was roughly an hour and some change, with a quick pit stop in the city of Batesville. Besides being home to the iconic rapper Soldier Boy, Batesville is a relatively quiet place as we look on at the downtown area. Train tracks run through the center of town, leading us to discover three parked locomotives under the Route 6 overpass. These EMDs are for the Grenada Railway, a regional Class 3 short line owned by the Gulf and Atlantic Railways. The line stretches 228 miles from Canton, Mississippi to Memphis, Tennessee, where the railroad interchanges with six Class 1 carriers. I loved the unique American flag paint scheme the locomotives wore as I continued west of Batesville. I didn't realize then that bad luck would soon strike, and it would strike hard. After an unsuccessful search in Clarksdale, we found the train deep in the trees outside of Tutwiler, Mississippi. Seeing the train here left me skeptical, as my worst fears were soon confirmed. A minor derailment the day before had halted the train as the grounds crew worked to restore the rails so the train could resume its trip to Clarksdale. Unfortunately, that meant we'd be stuck waiting. And that we did, having waited for six hours on a train that wouldn't move. Sadly, some afternoon plans in Oxford meant we would walk away empty-handed. While I was certainly bummed about my misfortune, what occurred the next day would be worth every ounce of disappointment. The real fun began on the morning of July 7th, 2023. Since introducing this railroad in 2020, I have eagerly been awaiting the chance to come down and film this incredibly unique short line. Emphasis on the word unique, as I was pleasantly surprised to see the Rock Island hauling a new shipment of ginormous windmill components. This was far cooler than anything I could have possibly expected, as the former BNSF SD35 works hard to pull the long train through the Mississippi countryside. The train slowly approaches the depot in downtown Webb as some folks gather outside to watch this monstrous train roll through the small town. The cloudy skies were greatly appreciated this morning, as any sunlight would have caused backlit conditions for filming. Rock Island's trackmaster, Austin, observes the train as it rolls over the street crossing. Special high-value loads demand extra protection, requiring additional eyes to watch the train. These massive windmill components are bound for the Vestas Transload Facility in Clarksdale, Mississippi, where they will be offloaded and stored. The depot in Webb has certainly seen some better days, as it continues to sit in its current dilapidated state. The depot was built in the year 1909 by the Yazoo and Mississippi Valley Railroad, serving as both a passenger and freight depot. In 2015, 
the depot was listed among Mississippi's 10 most endangered historic places. With the depot under private ownership, restoration efforts to bring it back to life would be extensive and possibly difficult to generate. But today, the depot continues to witness history along the rails as the Rock Island slowly brings their windmill cylinders through town. Just north of Webb, Rock Island's GP38 number 4373 sits ready to take over for the SD35. 4373 is one of two GP38s to wear the Rock Island's blue and black colors. Originally nicknamed Bankruptcy Blues, Robert Riley gave a new take on the old classic, renaming it Reborn Blue. Quite the fitting name, as the rock continues to harvest growth and improvement for the surrounding Mississippi communities. While the SD35 was sweet, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't excited to see the famous Rock Island Jeep take over the train. I was completely psyched. Sumner, Mississippi is home to Rock Island, with the railroad setting its headquarters in the center of town. Sumner boasts a population of roughly 250 people, making for a relatively quiet town square. The Rock Island operates an impressive network of rails, utilizing 85 miles of former Illinois Central trackage. The railroad interchanges with Canadian National at Swan Lake, with most cars bound for the Rock's two major rail yards in Clarksdale. Most rail-served commodities range from agricultural products, but this would be a new chapter in the Rock's legacy as the train rolls by the head office in downtown. The Rock Island hosts their locomotive facilities along this rip track in the center of town. Here, you can usually find the pair of GP38s on display, with plenty of other railroad pieces scattered in the area.
but possibly the coolest piece of equipment The Rock owns is their 2127. Purchased from the Canadian National in May of 2020, this beautiful Dash 8 locomotive proudly wears the former Rock Island's iconic red and yellow paint scheme. And man, let me tell you, she wears it well. Interestingly enough, the locomotive was reclassified as a C42-8, after the Rock had made some much-needed horsepower and software updates to the engine. It's impossible not to love what Robert Riley is doing with this railroad, leaving fans eagerly excited to see what will be painted next. Overhanging tree limbs would occasionally slow the crew down, stopping multiple times to clear them off the right-of-way. While most normal cars would have no issue brushing up against some tree branches, high and wide loads can't afford such a risk, meaning the crew had to ensure that nothing could impair this valuable cargo. The cloudy skies helped bring to life the famous Reborn Blue paint scheme. As a kid, I had always loved this iconic paint job with my earliest childhood memories being that of a Bachman HO model coal car. Seeing the legendary black and blue R adorning the nose of 4373 was an awesome moment in time, connecting myself to my inner childhood. The next town over was Tutwiler, Mississippi. The town is proclaimed the birthplace of blues, as railroad history can be seen stamped all across the town, as we set up to watch the Rock Island cross over the river in downtown. In the past, I doubt the original bridge builders ever thought a train like this would cross over their small wooden trestle bridge. If you asked some guys on the rock, they'd probably tell you the same thing. These windmill trains were a huge deal for this small railroad, easily being the highest value load to operate over the railroad in many years. If you look closely, the wooden beams slightly bow as the heavy cylinders slowly glide atop the bridge. I was loving every minute of this chase, still in pure disbelief at my sheer luck. Whatever disappointment I had had the day before had long been forgotten by this point, as I enjoyed the incredible scene in front of me. We set up in this crop field just north of town to grab a shot of the train rolling through the Mississippi countryside. From this vantage point, 
you can truly see how massive these windmills are, completely dwarfing the GP38 locomotive. I was beginning to love the gorgeous fields that made up the Mississippi Delta, being the sucker I am for any open field shot. Pair that with an EMD, a classic paint scheme, and one absurd load, and what you get is nothing short of an incredible railroad scene. Have I mentioned my excitement yet? I was beside myself. More overhanging tree branches had to be removed from the right-of-way as the train slowly creeps through the trees into Dublin. This stretch of railroad shows its old age as the train hobbles along the jointed rail. The ground crew guarded the railroad crossing, carefully observing their valuable train. While their appearance makes them look lightweight, I was told each windmill cylinder weighs nearly 70 tons. Plenty of careful planning occurred to ensure this load reached the customer safe and sound. I tested the new bird, flying it into position near these silo bins along Flowers Road. The newly purchased DJI Mini 3 Pro handled like a charm as the train entered the Clarksdale city limits. I was thoroughly impressed at how scenic the entire line was, being unable to find one shot that wasn't filled with Midwest beauty. While the rest of Mississippi may not equate to much in terms of good looks, the Northwest Delta region certainly gained my appreciation after this trip.
dragonflies buzzed over the field as we set up for one final shot along Sunflower River Road. Watching the Rock Island Jeep rock along the line one last time was a perfect way to end an incredible day of train chasing in Mississippi. The crew would tie the train roughly half a mile north of us, ending our morning chase of the rock. Thanks for rail fanning the legendary Rock Island with me. Exploring the revival of this railroad has long been on my bucket list of things to see, but what I walked away with was far greater than anything I could have ever hoped for. I certainly can't wait to see what the future holds for this incredible railroad, as they continue to rewrite the legend of the rock. As always, Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.